Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of 3D11, the 3D mailbox. Uh, in this video, and I should say in the last video, we made the 3D model of the mailbox, but in this one, we are going to do the environment, and then in the third part, we're going to do all the materials, texture, lighting, and all that good stuff, okay? Uh, I just shot this entire video. It was about 25 minutes long, and realized that it wasn't really recording. Half of it was, but my other half, my screen share was not. So I'm not exactly thrilled right now, but I'm going to do it again because I love you guys and you need this content. It's good stuff, okay? So here we go. You'll see on the screen right now, this is pretty much what we're going to make minus the trees. I say minus the trees because that actually comes from the AutoCAD architecture software. And in my class with my students, we're not able to access that software right now. So if you're out there and you have AutoCAD architecture, um, you know maybe I'll make another video about how you can use some of the assets that are in that program. Uh, but I'll make that for an as an AutoCAD architecture uh, video, not for AutoCAD. But for now, we're going to just skip that part of the video, okay? All right, here we go. So I'm actually going to erase everything that I've had drawn before. That way I have a little bit more space here. Come on, where's my mailbox? All right, right there. Now, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your mailbox, you're going to scale it up, type scale, grab any any point, and do 12 enter. That scales it up 12 times, so what was once 4 inches is now 4 feet tall, okay? You also have to type units, and you got to change the top thing to architectural. The reason why you have to do this is because now we want to work with feet and inches, and if you don't change that, you can only work with inches. So when I'm typing something now, if I type like 12 enter, that's 12 inches right there. If I type 12 apostrophe, that's 12 feet. If I type... 12 feet 6, that's going to be 12 feet 6 inches, 12 feet 6 and 1 half inch, 12 feet 6 and 1 half inches, okay? So that was like the crash course of feet and inches, all right? So here's what we're going to do. I Now now that I've already done this before, I want to, well, this is like the third time now, um, I want to draw all the profiles of what we're going to use first, and then we're going to go forward from there, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the front face, and we're going to orbit a little bit here. And we're going to go with a rectangle, slide off of there, click, and you're going to do dimensions. Those dimensions are going to be 6 by 6, and you're going to have it go, it's going to ask you which quadrant you want here. Just go in like the top right corner, okay? On that, we're going to go fillet radius 1 inch on the top two corners. You're then going to take that piece and copy it over. You're going to take that one and copy that one down down range here this way about 12 inches. So now you've got something like this right now. This part is going to go up 3 inches. And then it's going to get moved click anywhere down 3 inches because I want the bottoms of those to be even. I'll show you what that piece is right now. If you loft this and this, you get the piece that's going to be the where the driveway is. Okay, the part that kind of slopes down and then it goes to something flatter. Now before I do that loft though, so maybe you already did it back up for a second, you want a copy of this because that's going to get extruded down 8 feet. For, oops, wrong way negative eight feet um, for the part that you would drive over when you're going into your driveway okay so now we don't need those other uh, you know what let's not loft yet we're gonna need some other things first we're gonna need another rectangle and we're gonna slide this way and click doesn't matter how far and you're gonna go dimensions and you're gonna do five and five and you're gonna do that again in the upper right quadrant and then do fill it radius one that's going to be in the top left and the top right. This is going to be the filler piece between them. If you just had one solid curb going all the way down, it really wouldn't look that realistic because every curb has like a little brake section and then it's another curb and then another brake section and so on. Okay, So this piece is going to be filled with some kind of black material later on. It's going to be extruded at one inch. I do need a copy of this one as well because I'm going to need a spacer for this smaller stuff. So I'll do the same thing. I'll bring this up by three inches. I'll move that down three inches, and then uh, that'll be good enough to go right in this section right here. So now this one gets extruded 
eight feet. I'm gonna let that go backwards. Uh, you're gonna loft these two together. Two enters at the end. This one is gonna be, that's the five by five shape, is just gonna be a one inch extrude. And this one as well is gonna be a one inch extrude. Now we do have one more thing. This is all the pieces of our curb. We do have one more thing we have to draw here. If I go over here somewhere with a polyline, I should be able to go, let's say 20 feet. And then we're gonna go six inches. And then we're gonna go 20 feet back. That's 20 apostrophe and then back up. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna hover over the midpoint. If I can get this thing out of the way. There we go. Hover over the midpoint, convert to arc, and just bring that up a little bit because that's gonna give you the crown of the road. So the road is a little crown, that way the water runs down on the sides, okay? Um, just making sure we're recording again because I don't wanna do this a third time. All right, so we got that now. Let me move that a little closer to my other stuff. So basically with this curb, what you're going to have is, I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to go back to 2D wireframe. Whoops. Okay. This piece would go here, but it's going to move. Come on, buddy. Move one inch that way. So there's going to be a one inch space between the two. This piece move midpoint to midpoint. So you can see that's your spacer. And if I go on to conceptual again, you'll see there's like a little spacer piece in between. This one's going to do the same thing. Grab this piece, move midpoint to midpoint. Grab this one, move midpoint to the far midpoint, which is right hard to see right there. Always orbit if you can't see something the right way. Conceptual, boom. That's all you really need. You're not going to see anything else in this render. I mean, maybe you want to take these two and copy them from this corner to that corner. We might need to see a little bit more than what I had here, but for the most part, we're going to be somewhere in this realm. Um, I'm going to move this mailbox a little bit too. Grab your multiple pieces here move stay on the green line because everything is on the same plane right now and we don't want to mess that up move that maybe back a little bit and then move it over a little bit because you don't want it that close to your driveway something like that okay now the crown of the road wherever that went way out here now move we got to do a little work on this all right where did i grab that from i grabbed it from the bottom i want to put the top of it at the bottom of the curb Okay, this is going to get extruded as far as you want. It doesn't really matter. We're going to put a line on there, and I'll show you how to make a line. You need to subtract it from the actual model of the street itself. Okay, so if we go to the front side again, and we go to 2D wireframe, and we orbit this just a little bit, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line we're gonna slide over here and type 12 enter. And if that doesn't work for you, then just draw a line 12 and then and then um, erase a line later on. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up, it doesn't matter how far, you're gonna come over four inches. It, it, I should say it does matter how far, you have to go above the top of the street. But as far as like how high above the street or anything like that, just better to go extra than, than not, uh, not being far enough, okay? Then go uh, down and get even with this. You know what? go down too far. I would say go up too far and go down too far. And then go four, and then we're just gonna extend this one. So you've got this shape here that's actually just kinda, did I draw that wrong? Hang on. Why did that go like that? That's strange. It technically doesn't matter, but I don't know why that happened, so I'm gonna do that again. Maybe I will draw my one foot line here, 12 inches. And I'll erase that later on. I think I think what happened was what is happening right now? Why is that going on an angle? You know what we should do? We should go to UCS and hit world. And now see if that's my problem. If you're having the same problem. 
um, at the end of my 12 inch line. Yeah, see now I can go straight up. So if you're having that issue where it's like going on an angle like that, just type UCS and click on world. That's world coordinates, um, which just keeps it like strictly X, Y, and Z and it doesn't turn on you. All right. So let's go up like eight inches. Let's go over four. That's going to be the width of the actual line. Let's go down eight and then let's close. Okay. So now we have this right here. We're going to join that and we're going to extrude that down. Doesn't matter how far. Okay. So we have one street and we have one thing that's going to get subtracted from that street. The only thing is we need copies of these. Okay. So, so important to make copies because you don't want to make those again. And again, we don't really know what exactly what size we made them. We just kind of made them. Okay. So now what we'll do is we will do, I got to get to my 3d tools. We will do an intersect. Okay. If you look at the intersect here, the way that that works is you have two pieces and it only, you know, what remains when you're done is just the part where they both intersect with each other. So you can see you got the gray, you got the green, where they touch each other is what you end up with, which is that red piece. So in this case, I'm going to end up with just a piece right here because the street is touching the line right there. So intersect one, two, enter. And I end up with just that. The reason why I did that is because this is going to plug in a hole that I'm going to make on this one. Subtract from the street, the line, and you'll see it leaves a hole there. That's my extra line. Don't forget to get rid of that. This has a crown on the top of it because remember it was a curve. I can't make it flat on the top. I got to keep with the street and then it plugs in that hole. So on conceptual, you'll see now that you have street and you have line line is going to get filled in with white because that's like your shoulder line on this on a, on a road. And this is going to get filled with some, with some kind of gray or black asphalt. So take both of those. You could do the other lines if you want, if you want to zoom out your render a little bit, but remember this is Hollywood and we don't really need to see that stuff. Um, you're going to grab this stuff. You're going to move it from the top of the crown here and you can put it at the bottom of the curb and that's going to be good enough right there because we're going to be rendering this area right about there. So like in mine, you wouldn't see these other lines out here and that's why I don't have them. Okay. Um, so now let's flip this thing around a little bit and let's do the driveway and let's do the, sh um, the grass. Okay. So the driveway, you're going to use a box. Um, you're going to start right here. And you're going to go, it does not matter how far, just enough where we can't see the edge of it. And then you're going to go down from there just a couple inches. doesn't matter how far. Okay. I'm actually going to make a copy of that. And I'm going to grab it from the bottom corner here, and I'm going to put it in the bottom corner there. One is going to be grass. The other one is going to be uh, a, uh, a driveway. Now, my driveway had a little bit of a curve on there. So if you want to play around with that, it was, it was like a round driveway, um, or I should say like a 180-degree turn driveway. You know, you can mess with a polyline tool or whatever you want to do in order to get that to happen. But in this case, we don't really need to do that. Um, what I do want to do, though, before I go any further, is I want to move this up one inch. And you'll see why, because if I bring up this render, let's see, where did that render go? I thought I had that open. Hang on one second. you'll see that I made the driveway a little bit higher than the grass so that it looks like it's sitting on the ground, but a little bit higher than what the grass is. So I moved it up one inch and you can see, I don't know why I put a yellow line there, but that should actually be a white line. Um, and everything else, you can see the curve of the driveway. That's totally up to you. We did pavers, we did grass. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much it. The model itself is done. Or I should say the environment and the model are done. We're going to again, render like this area right here. And that's going to be the end of that tale. Okay, so this is the end of the 3D11 part two video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next part, which is just where I put materials and texture and lighting on there. And then I'm going to render it. That should be a pretty short part. All right. Thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next one.